everybody, Darren from Fat Cat Motoring here. Um, something a little bit different for you on this one. Um, not really got much in the way of uh, content filmed yet, obviously because it's before show season. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I would take you and have a look around my strange and unusual daily driver. It's a KDM car and it's a KDM car that the UK has forgotten about. It's slightly unusual. You don't tend to see them all too often. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So this is my 2013 Hyundai Veloster that I've had for just over a year now. So let me go and uh, take you around and show you a few of its little quirks. So we'll start here at the front. So I actually think it's quite a good looking car to be honest with you. I mean, it's got, you know, you've got the daytime running lights underneath here and then you've got the LED sort of around the headlights. Quite a good looking front end, I think, but I think so. Moving on round, now we've got 18 inch wheels, and these are standard, these come from factory and they come in the black as well. Obviously, with the red inserts, I think they look really nice to be honest with you. They could do with having a you know a refurb soon, um, but yeah, that is on the cards as well, with a couple of other little bits and pieces. I'm not going to delve too much into it. That's so like I said, she's a 2013. Um, they've only, they only had a three year run, these cars, in the UK. So between 2012 and 2014, so three years, it was on sale here. And then it was dropped um, by Hyundai. Um, lack of uh, lack of sales. As I said, they only, they only made about 2,500 units of these. So yeah, not a terrific seller. I, I, I struggle to see what I mean I really like it I don't know what your you guys thoughts are um, but yeah no, I, I genuinely really really like this car so its original purpose was actually to replace um, the coupe the Hyundai coupe um, obviously Hyundai coupe sold in a lot better numbers than this so obviously this is probably why it was uh, it was dropped after only three years because obviously it wasn't as successful as the coupe was. It's a shame, really. So there are actually three generations of um, Hyundai's Veloster, um, but the UK only actually got the first gen, and you cannot get a right-hand drive second or third generation at all anymore. So obviously hence why you know we don't get that generation in the country but amazingly out of the just over two and a half thousand units that were made um we've only lost a hundred of them so there's still quite a few of them about um had a quick look on auto trader uh, yesterday i think there was there was only about 17 on there for sale so they don't come up very often um but a great car nonetheless so we've got panoramic sunroof as you can see I'll show you obviously when I go take you inside and whatnot 
this is all glass so underneath obviously where the window is and all the way back that's all one big glass panel so there's a lot of light inside the car especially on a nice sunny day now this is my favorite part about this car so obviously it was designed to replace the Hyundai coupe so technically yes it is a coupe but if I take you round this side we've got two doors on this side whereas you don't have the two doors on the other side so this is known as a one plus two layout obviously this is designed for obviously easier access to the back and there is quite a lot of space in here you'll be surprised there's a lot of space in here right let's show you the inside so I'm now sat inside and I'm just gonna have a I'm gonna show you around uh, the cabin of the car. So we'll start uh, we'll start with the clocks and the dials and what so this one has done uh, just over 61 and a half thousand miles. Um, like I said it's uh, 10 it's just over 10 years old now um, and it drives really really nice. Obviously we'll do a quick drive around in a minute. So but you've got obviously the trip computer it says about 33. I only do, so I only put her around with this car. You know, I don't take it on great journeys or anything like that. So the MPG isn't, you know, going to be the best. Um, but taking it on a long run, you'll probably get around uh, 40 to 45 to the gallon out of it. Um, and I run, I run it on uh, 99 um, Tesco's fuel anyway. Um, pure the fact, I just don't like E10. So we've got leather steering wheel, leather, well everything in here to be honest with you, like leather, leather seats, we've got electric windows all around, but there's only three, because obviously we only have three doors, obviously the window behind me doesn't uh, doesn't open, um, you can lock the windows as well as the doors from these switches here, um, electric folding mirrors and adjustable, that obviously and they do actually fold all the way in unlike some of them considering this car is 10 years old it's actually quite a sophisticated um, media system um, obviously you've got all the uh, obviously all your AM FM and everything like that um, you've got a CD player you've got Bluetooth connectivity for your phone obviously that's all connected here and um, you can actually plug I've been told um, games consoles into this. I've not actually looked into that. I don't know whether that's true or not I might have to find that out um, because I'm sure uh, boy wonder would be happy with that if uh, dad had a uh, Some sort of Xbox plugged into the uh, Plugged into the car, but we shall see. I'm just gonna jump out the car in a minute so you can see obviously we've got Veloster everywhere. Sorry, it's, it's not as clean as I like it to be. Um, it was cleaned a few days ago But I have been using it since so we've got Obviously you've got the, the Veloster embedded in the seat as well. I think that's quite a nice touch. Obviously the seats are um, the seats are heated. Obviously we've got switches here. Um, both fronts both fronts are heated. Unfortunately the back ones aren't, but you know it is a high end die, so you do have to expect some budget stuff in here. Um, you've got cubby holes all over the place. You've got one there. Obviously you've got the glove box the other side. There's one. Well, there's two here. You've got one there, and then another one underneath. Um, yeah, loads and loads of cabin room in here, lots of it. Um, obviously it's a push start button, little push to start on there. You know, it's quite a nice sophisticated roof actually, so it, obviously it closes up and you've actually then got a guard that comes in over the top, so if you want to shut the sunroof out, to keep the sunlight out, you can. I think I quite like that. I think that's a uh, that's a nice touch. Yeah, but over, over, overall, the cabin is actually a very very nice place to be. I actually I really like these door pulls. <sighs> they sort of like stay out there like little blades. Look, they're quite nice. Right, let's go for a drive and uh, see how we get on. Right then folks, so what is the Veloster like to drive? 
Well, she's not perfect, I'll be honest with you. So, first thing you know, well, like when, when you get into the car, it feels a lot better built than some of the high end dies of old, you know, especially, you know, even, even back sort of cars that are like five years older than this. They were, they weren't great, to be honest with you. They really weren't, they were really flimsy and like really cheaply made. So, I mean, there's not, it's not perfect. I mean, you know, some of the fill of the plastic and that, you know, it could be a little bit better, um, but it is 10 years old and you've got to think that Hyundai in the last, or even in the last sort of five years are only just coming into their stride now, you know, with, you know, like soft touch plastics and things like that. So it's not, not to be, not to be unexpected, if that makes sense. But overall, the car, the car is a nice place to sit. It's very comfortable um, for for what it is. Effectively, I, I don't like calling it a coupe because it's. I don't think it is. It, it is. it is a hatchback with a door missing. That's my opinion. I don't know what you guys think, but that is my opinion. So, this car is a just a 1.6 liter petrol engine. That that is the biggest engine that they actually put in these they did do a turbo variant um again they are more scarce again so they are very they are quite a rare thing to see um you get 138 horsepower as standard um so you think that it wouldn't be too bad performance wise um it could be better i'll be honest with you I mean, it does it does go, but you have to be in quite a low gear to try to go anywhere. The torque is not that impressive at all. Um, you know what I mean? So it's it does it does make a good noise. I'll be honest with you. I, I've not done it. The only thing I've changed um, on this car is I've put a um, is put a performance panel filter in, it's just a replacement panel, it's not you know, an induction kit or anything like that, that's all I've done. So like I said, I've not, I've not made any performance upgrades to the car, I don't intend to either, to be quite honest with you, um, I use this car as a daily driver, you know, obviously we have got other cars that, you know, we go and do things, obviously. Cat's got her i30, and that's sort of our main family car, I would say. You know, going and doing, you know, like holidays and, you know, family days out and whatnot, we tend to use that. But on that front, coming from a, from, for a car that is effectively, is so a one plus, a one plus two car, would I say is good for a family? Um, I would say, yeah to be honest with you, especially if you're a young family with a single child. Um, like I said, that's that's what we are, obviously, you know, we're both in our 30s and the boy is eight years old now. And for us, just going out, nipping around, doing whatever, this car is perfect. You know, he's got his own door, he can get himself in and out without any problems whatsoever. You know, there's plenty of room back there as well. So, yeah, I, I'd say it works very well as a family car. I'll be honest with you, it's got a nice big boot as well. You get Isofix car seat points as well. So, yeah, I mean, why, I, I don't, yeah, I can't see why you couldn't use this as a family car whatsoever. I think it's, I think it's a great little car. So the car does have a couple of flaws, unfortunately. Like I said, like all cars, you know, you're gonna have, you know, some issues. Um, first of all, if you're looking for a a sort of a family hatchback and you've got two kids and you know they're both young kids and whatnot, it's not for you, unfortunately, because as long as the driver's seat does fold forward, but it's very you're very limited as to space-wise getting in and out through this side. So obviously everything is done via the passenger side so that is a bit of a concern so yeah i would say that's not really you know, 
Second of all, um, parts for these are quite expensive. Um, like I said, they didn't sell very well here, so there's not a lot of parts places around for them. So you'll find that, especially like body panels and things like that, um, because everything is different sized, like because, you know, you've got two doors one side and all the panels are different, they're different sizes. So things aren't cheap. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, a lot of your parts as well will come from America because, you know, they love these cars over here. They sell really well over there. Um, but yeah, a lot of parts aren't available here for these. So you are going to be waiting a little while unless you want to go to Hyundai main dealers and pay in their prices, which I sincerely doubt you do. But the main problem I find with this car is it doesn't like to be driven hard. You know, especially the steering at times can feel quite numb, um, especially if you're, you know, if, if you're not paying attention, like if you're like on a like on an A road or whatnot, and you know, like you hit some uneven ground or whatever, it is it. It's not very stable, I don't think. Um, you know, Hyundai built a great looking car, but didn't really put the suspension setup in it to make it sort of, you know, drive as well as it looked. And that that's that's a shame, really. And I think that's what. You know, it put it does put a lot of people off of them, and hence why it's probably not sold as well. So it's time to get on and talk about the drivability of this car. So, first thing you're going to want to know, or first thing you get asked is, is it fast? And the the answer is no, it's not fast. I'd say you've only got 138 horsepower. It's not a particularly torquey engine, um, and surprisingly, it's actually quite heavy for what it is. So no, it's not a particularly fast car. It's, you know, it's quite happily sat at, you know, 60, 70 on the motorway. They'll run at about just uh, just just over 3,000. You know, we've got cruise control and everything like that. It's perfectly capable of dealing with everyday, you know, day-to-day -day traffic. And there is a little bit of grunt there if you do want to, you know, you know, give it a boot for or whatnot. Um, but yeah, as for like performance-wise, you're not going to be setting any um, hot laps around Castle Coombe or any other uh, related uh, circuit. I will just give it a little bit of a blip so you can uh, see if you can hear the uh, the exhaust note. Yeah, like I said, the performance isn't that great, to be honest with you. I mean, the 0 to 60 time is something like nine and a half seconds. So it's really not, you know, it's not gonna set, you know, set any, you know, quarter mile records or, you know, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna be seeing it on track days, for example. One thing I will, will mention about it, um, and it's, it comes out with a lot of criticism, um, from people who've driven these or test driven them or whatever, is the steering fill. Now, I don't know what it is, but you don't get a lot of feedback through the steering. Um, a lot of the time you're pretty much guessing where you've got to um, put the steering. It makes the car feel quite nervous um, in corners. Um, you know, if you, if you persist with it, 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 but it will take you a long time to work out what the steering capabilities are of this car. So, yeah, again, it doesn't shine in the way of um, steering. It handles well, um, but you don't get a lot of feeling back through the steering. So, again, that's why a lot of people are put off by them. So the car was actually, actually launched at, believe it or not, car enthusiasts. Hyundai wanted a piece of the market that like Honda and Ford and what everybody else with hot hatches, you know, seemed to get the custom. But they were sort of, they released it at a time where young people didn't have money to go and buy new cars, you know. So again, I think that's why the sales figures suffered with them. But Hyundai's typical market at the time 
was old was older you know older people you know you know don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with the old you know the older generation of drivers you know but they were the only sort of people who could afford this sort of car at the time and when they looked at it and they saw you know the odd number of doors and you know all like the technology and everything in it they didn't want it either so it's surprising they actually sold as many as they did so in that aspect the Hyundai Veloster was a flop for Hyundai and like I said you know it only lasted three years and then they pulled it from they pulled it out of the show route that being said though I still I still can work out why it is that I like this car so much I don't know what it is I think it's I don't really think there's anything else like it on the road. I mean, obviously you've got the Mini Clubman, for example, but the problem with the Mini Clubman is the door's on the wrong side, so when you pull up, you kick your children out into the middle of the road, and that's no good. I hope I put this door on the proper side, on the pavement side. Well, that's good, but this is not by any means a match for a Mini Cooper, for example. You know, the Mini Cooper drives a lot better and you can pick one up for probably about the same price as you use one of these. A good one will cost you five to six thousand pounds. Um, there are cheaper ones, but they're all high mileage and, you know, they've, um, yeah, they've had hard lives. But all this, all this aside, I think it's because because of what it is and because it's different it's odd it's quirky i i really like it i don't know why i just like i said i i like different cars i like things that are a little bit different a little bit out there you know i don't like the fact that you know you don't really get a good driving experience i mean like i said the mini is a far better car to drive However, through all its little niggles and, you know, the, like the poor handling, for example, and the fact that it's slow as a horse and cart, it is, it has done very, very well in the year that I've had it. Um, the cold spell that we had over the winter, I mean, it was down to, what, about some minus 10 in some places, you know, through the snow and everything like that. It started on the button every time without hesitation, and for a for a ten year old car, I I couldn't ask for any more from it. I really can't. You know, you get in in the morning. It's key. Obviously, it's keyless start, so you can start. You know, start it up, warm it up, put the heated seat on. You know, and drive and drive to where it takes minutes to warm up. It's cracking. It really is. And, you know, when you're just sort of pottering around and you're not, you know, you know, you're not in a hurry or anything like that, it's so comfortable and, yeah, I just, yeah, comfort-wise, spot on, cannot, cannot move at all. So what are the running costs like? Well, um, briefly touched on the miles per gallon earlier when I was doing the walk around, but, um, because I only potter around, I'm only getting about 35 to 38-ish. Um, longer runs, I can do between 40 to 45. Um, and I'm quite, ha I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy with those figures because the car doesn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, so if you, um, I've had a chat, obviously, with a few people on some forums and whatnot. Some people are getting 45 closer, sometimes 50-odd to the gallon out of these. You know, for a little for a little 1.6 petrol, that's pretty impressive. You know what I mean? The tax is 180 pounds a year. Um, so again, it's not a massive amount. I mean, car tax is going up in general, but it's still in a nice low bracket. Um, again, insurance is peanuts because it's not very powerful. You know, and for you know somebody somebody over 30 who's you know who's a who, who drives for a profession. I, I can't, I think it was about £200, but maybe it might have even been less than that this year for my renewal. 
So, yeah. And it's safe as well. It's, you know, you've got airbags everywhere in here. You've got two in the front. You've got uh, two in the side. Uh, you've got pillar curtain airbags as well. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still impressed today after a year of owning this car. And I've had a lot of cars and I've still not been as impressed with a lot, most of them as I have this one. opinion is that Hyundai very nearly got this right if they'd have sort if they if they'd have uprated the suspension a little bit and put some quicker steering on and given it a little bit more poke I think this could have been you know a rival easily could have been a rival for you know the mini um, the Fiesta ST um yeah quite quite easily but they just missed the mark on it that's my opinion um and like i said that's so that's the reason obviously why it wasn't so popular that being said though my opinion is that it's a it's a fantastic it's a fantastic little car for you know a young a young family who isn't quite ready for you know the four by four or you know the god awful estate car you know it's it's a great practical little car it's got loads of boot space loads of room inside you know it's got all the technology you need you know and priced around five grand you know i mean it's it's a it's a bargain in my opinion um providing you can find a good one so to all of those who have stuck to, with me till the end, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, don't if you ever see a Veloster or you ever get a chance to go and test drive one, if you're you know somebody like me who's got you know a single child, for example, um, they're a great they're a great car. They're very they're very reliable. They're very dependable. Um, so yeah give one a uh, give one a consideration so now that show season's coming obviously we're gonna have a lot more regular uh, content coming um obviously i'm gonna be uh, teaming up with uh, cats automotive this year to do a lot more um shows and some different events that we haven't been to this year so keep an eye out for those on both channels i'll put her channel in uh, in the comments below i hope you like this video guys um, drop a comment below, uh, give me a like, subscribe, and all that gump. Um, I really appreciate it. Let's see if we can get to 100 subscribers. And uh, maybe Cat will let me buy another project car. So we'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Everybody take care. We'll see you on the next video. Ta-da.